Got another question for the Buffer Solutions playlist, so we're up to number 11 now. Going to do this one slightly differently. I'm sharing the link to the question in the description of the video. So if you just want to click on that, try the question and then play the video for the answers. Okay, so make a start. So there's essentially three things we've got to do. I'm going to do them in this order. I'm going to calculate the mass of the N2O3 used in step one first. I'm then going to explain why a buffer forms in step two, and then I'm going to calculate the pH of the buffer. Okay, so I've knocked out a little reaction equation for step one. So we were told that this acid, nitrous acid, can be prepared by reacting N2O3 with water, and it's the only product. So that's obviously the equation there. We know the concentration of the acid, and it was 100 cm cubed in volume. So we can work out how many moles of acid we've got. So just concentration times volume in decimeters cubed, 0.05 moles of acid. Applying the ratio, there must have been half as many moles of N2O3 used. So that's 0.025 moles, and now we just need to multiply that by the MR to get the mass. MR of the N2O3 is 76, so that's coming out at 1.90 grams. So moving on to explaining why a buffer's formed in step two. You see I've written an equation for the reaction. So it's just an acid plus alkali gives salt and water equation. So the initial moles of acid we'd already calculated, 0.05. The initial moles of sodium hydroxide from the concentration times volume is coming out at 0.015. Obviously we wouldn't have any salt or water initially. So thinking about the final moles now, at the end of the reaction, well, all of the sodium hydroxide is going to react. 0.015 moles of the acid is going to react, so that'll go down to 0.035. We're going to make 0.015 moles of salt, because of the one-to-one -one ratio there. And not that we need it, but we're also going to form 0.015 moles of H2O. So why have we got a buffer solution at the end of the reaction? It's because the weak acid was in excess, so we've got the weak acid still left over, but we've also made some salt. And finally, moving on to the calculation of the pH of the buffer, you'll see I've just copied up the information we're going to need. The other thing we were told in the information was that the final solution was made up to one decimeter cubed. So these moles are effectively concentrations as well. So obviously we're going to bring in the Casadova salt expression. So the H plus concentration of the buffer is equal to the Ka of the weak acid multiplied by the acid concentration divided by the salt concentration. So putting the numbers in, we weren't given the Ka value, we were given the pKa value. So I've just put 10 to the minus pKa, so that is effectively the Ka. Or you could calculate it and put it in there. Multiplied by the acid concentration, which was that 0.035 divided by the salt concentration, 0.015. So the H plus concentration is coming out at 1.0665 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per decimeter cubed. All we need to do now is minus log that, which gives a pH of 2.97.